thought I could control everything, but look at what I've done. I've hurt everyone who ever cared about me. Sophia felt like a failure in every role, daughter, mother, sister, aunt, professional, and friend. Regret consumed her. With winter closing in, she could no longer live in her car. Forced to flee her hometown out of fear, she moved into a motel and eventually a Christian shelter. Inside a modest motel room. The walls are thin, and the furnishings are basic. A small bed, a chair, and a desk. Sophia sits on the edge of the bed, wrapped in a threadbare blanket, staring at the wall. The chill of winter creeps in through the single pane window. She picks up her phone and scrolls through old pictures of her family, each image pulling her deeper into regret. She glances at a photo of her children, laughing at a family gathering, their faces full of joy. Tears begin to stream down her cheeks. I was supposed to be their mother, their protector. Instead, I let my pride and anger drive them away. How could I have been so blind? Her phone buzzes with a message from the shelter she's considering. She opens it and reads about their services and support groups. A flicker of hope ignites within her, but she quickly crushes it with doubt. What will they think of me? A failed daughter, a mother who abandoned her kids. How can I even ask for help? She stands up and paces the small room, her hands wringing together anxiously. I can't keep running. I can't live in that car any longer, freezing every night and hiding from the world. But, what if I face them again? What if they hate me? Instead of turning to prayer, surrendering to God, forgiving herself and others, and focusing on solutions, Sophia let the enemy torment her with negative thoughts. She magnified her problems, sinking deeper into sorrow and edging closer to depression. Though she didn't realize it, the Lord saw her need for help and would soon guide her to seek counseling and speak to church elders in the remote village. I just wanted to protect them from my own failures. But all I did was push them away, didn't I? Proverbs 15.22 says, Plants fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Galatians 6, 2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. James 5.16 says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Suddenly, her phone rings, startling her. It's a number she doesn't recognize. After a moment of hesitation, she answers. Hello. Hi, Sophia. This is Rachel from the Christian Shelter. I just wanted to check in with you. Are you still considering coming to stay with us? Sophia's heart raises at the mention of the shelter, a mix of fear and hope washing over her. Ah, uh, yes, I'm. I'm thinking about it. But, I don't know if I'm worthy of your help. Sophia, everyone deserves a chance to find hope and healing. We're here to support you, no matter your past. It's a safe place, and we want to help you rebuild your life. <laughs> I've failed so many people. I don't know if I can face anyone again. What if they see me as a monster? You're not a monster, Sophia. You're a person who's made mistakes, just like everyone else. The first step to healing is admitting that you need help. You're stronger than you realize. Sophia wipes her tears, feeling a glimmer of strength. She takes a deep breath. Okay, I'll come. I... I need to try something different. I can't keep living like this. That's great to hear. We're looking forward to having you here. Just take it one step at a time. You're not alone in this. Sophia hangs up, her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and hope. She grabs her belongings, taking one last look at the motel room. I'm ready to face whatever comes next. I can't keep running from my past. 
It's time to take responsibility and find my way back. With renewed determination, she leaves the motel, stepping out into the cold winter air, ready to embrace the unknown and seek the help she so desperately needs. A few days later, in a quiet counseling room, softly lit with warm tones, there's a comfortable chair for Sophia and a desk where the counselor, Rachel, sits with a notepad. A small cross hangs on the wall, and a few plants add a touch of life to the space. Sophia, looking worn and hesitant, fidgets in her seat. Welcome, Sophia. I'm glad you decided to come in today. How are you feeling about our session? I don't know, Rachel. I've been so lost. I've heard so many people, and I can't shake this feeling that there's something dark inside me. Rachel nods understandingly, noting the anguish in Sophia's expression. It's a brave step to recognize that pain. Sometimes, when we act in ways that hurt ourselves and others, it's a reflection of deeper issues. Have you had a chance to think about what might be driving those feelings? I think, I think I let pride and anger consume me. It felt like I was possessed by something. I wanted to hurt everyone who hurt me. But now, I see how much destruction I caused, and I'm terrified. Recognizing that is significant, Sophia. It sounds like you're beginning to see the connection between your actions and the internal struggles you've faced. Have you ever thought about the role of spiritual warfare in this? Spiritual warfare? I've heard people talk about it, but I never really believed it applied to me. I thought I was just, bad. Come to think of it, it's reported that our ancestors worshipped various idols, and set up evil altars. Many people face battles with darkness, whether it's through wickedness, pain, or unhealed wounds. But the good news is, through prayer and fasting, we can seek deliverance. Would you be open to exploring this path further? I know we spoke about it during our last session and we regularly fast and pray here. Sophia looks hesitant but intrigued, her curiosity piqued. I've never really prayed seriously. Something always held me back, until I reached rock bottom, that is. But maybe, maybe it's time I took prayer seriously. I feel so empty. However, the weekly fasting and praying that's done here has helped me draw closer to God. It's never too late to turn to God, Sophia. Fasting and prayer can help you seek clarity, strength, and healing. It's a way to confront those evil spirits and bring light into the darkness. Let's pray together, shall we? Sophia nods, tears welling in her eyes as she feels a flicker of hope. Rachel places a comforting hand on Sophia's arm. Have you been fasting, praying the prayer I shared with you, and meditating day and night on the deliverance scriptures I emailed? Yes, I followed your guidance and asked the Lord Jesus to help me pray from the heart and trust in his word. Thank you for being willing to fast and pray for me, even though we just met. Let us pray. Let's pray for guidance and healing. Heavenly Father, we come to you in humility. We lift up Sophia, asking for your mercy and grace. Please reveal to her the roots of her pain and the darkness that has clouded her heart. We seek deliverance from any evil spirits that have taken hold of her life. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. As Rachel prays, Sophia closes her eyes, feeling an unfamiliar warmth surrounding her. She whispers a quiet prayer in her heart, seeking forgiveness and strength. As Rachel continues to pray, suddenly, Sophia begins to manifest, her body reacting to the spiritual battle taking place within. Undeterred, Rachel stands firm in the name of Jesus, boldly casting out the demons. She fears no evil, for she knows that the one who dwells in believers is greater than the one who is in the world. 1 John 4, 4 Her confidence is in the authority of Christ, and with every word, she drives the forces of darkness away. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command every evil spirit to leave right now. 
It is written that we, as believers, have been given power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm us, Luke 10:19. By the authority of Jesus Christ, I bind and cast you out, never to return again. You are banished to the abyss, awaiting your final judgment. I declare that Sophia is free, for whom the sun sets free is free indeed, John 8:36. Her freedom shall be permanent, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord, for her deliverance. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am free. I am free at last. Thank you, Lord. What is it, Sophia? I felt spirits leave my body. Glory to God. I believe you've been delivered. Now, it's important to maintain your deliverance by making God's word the foundation of your life. I feel so light, full of joy, and completely free. Is this what it feels like to truly connect with God? Yes, this is the beginning of your journey with him. May his light continue to flood your heart, driving away every trace of darkness in and around your life. Walk in his word, and his peace will sustain you. Amen. What you just experienced shows that you're opening your heart to change. Remember, it's a process. As you fast and pray, let God lead you in this journey. Be patient with yourself, and allow his love to transform you. I want to change. I'm ready to face my past and ask for forgiveness. I can't keep living like this. I want to make amends, even if it takes a lifetime. Rachel smiles, proud of Sophia's commitment to healing. That's a powerful commitment, Sophia. Forgiveness is a journey, both for yourself and for those you've hurt. We'll work together to guide you through this process. Let's create a plan for your fasting and prayer. It's time to reclaim your life. Sophia wipes away her tears, feeling lighter, more hopeful than she has in a long time. I want to start today. I need to find peace and restore my life, no matter how hard it gets. Rachel nods, and they begin to discuss the details of Sophia's plan, embarking on a journey toward healing and redemption. The Flores family gathers in the living room, their faces more peaceful than they have been in years. The atmosphere is calmer, but there is still a sense of unresolved tension. After a year of regular fasting and prayer, deliverance has come to many of them. It's been a long year. We've been delivered, thank God. But, what now? What about Sophia? The room falls into an uneasy silence. Some exchange glances, unsure of how to respond. Bastion leans forward, his face still hardened but not as bitter. I'm not sure I can trust her again. After everything she did, how do we know she won't go back to her old ways? Forgiveness doesn't mean we let her back into our lives. It doesn't erase what she's done. I understand how you all feel, that she's still my daughter. She may be far away, but I ask the Lord every day to watch over her, to protect her wherever she is. I can't just cut her out of my heart. The others shift uncomfortably, some nodding and understanding but others clearly conflicted. Isandro, who has been quiet, finally speaks. I don't know if we'll ever be able to trust her fully again. But maybe that's not the point. Maybe the point is, we've forgiven her. That's all we can control. Whether she changes or not, that's between her and God. Her kids have been part of this too, even from afar. They've gone through the same deliverance we have. They forgave her, so maybe we can too. Leo shifts in his seat, frowning slightly, his voice unsure. I forgave her, I really did, but I'm not sure I can ever feel safe around her again. There's too much history, too much pain. The family falls silent again. Ines looks down at her hands, tears welling in her eyes. She speaks softly, almost to herself. I've prayed so long for her. Even after everything, she's still my child. I can't help but hope that God will continue working on her heart. Maybe one day, maybe one day she'll truly come back to us. Mum, we understand, but for now, it's probably best if she stays away. 
It's not about not loving her, it's about keeping the peace we've fought so hard to regain. The family murmurs in agreement, their voices soft but resolute. Bastion, leaning back in his chair, speaks again, this time more thoughtfully. Maybe we'll never know if she's truly changed, but I agree with Mum. We should keep praying for her. Pray that God keeps her on the right path, wherever she is. And if she ever does come back, we'll deal with it then. But we won't let her bring the past back with her. Yes. I just hope she knows we forgave her. I hope she feels it. And, I trust that God will continue to protect her, even if she's far from us. At least Belinda and the boys stay in touch with me from overseas, but as for Sophia, it's like she's vanished without a trace. All attempts to reach her have been unsuccessful. There's a quiet moment as everyone absorbs into words. The tension is lifted, but the wounds of the past still linger. Still, there's a sense of hope in the room, the hope that things may yet heal in time. We've done what we can. All we can do is to continue to pray for her and the rest of the family. The family bows their heads once more, joining hands for the final prayer of the day. The family is united in their faith, their voices rising softly in prayer. Though Sophia is not physically present, her absence is felt, and the hope for her redemption lingers in the hearts of those she's hurt. Lord, protect Sophia, wherever she is, keep her safe. The family rises, and though the air is still heavy with what's left unsaid, there is a quiet resolve. They've forgiven Sophia, even if trust will take time. And for now, that's enough. Sophia sits in a quiet room with a soft light filtering through the window. She looks both weary and hopeful. Rachel and Pastor Samuel sit next to her. They've been through several counseling sessions with her, but today feels different. Today, Sophia is ready to confront her past and face the truth. Sophia, you've come so far. There's no shame in admitting you were wrong, you know. In fact, the Bible says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble, James 4, 6. It's humility that brings healing. I feel like I've ruined everything. I ignored every warning, every whisper from God. I let pride, bitterness, and ambition control me. And now, my family, my children, even my ex-husband, Miguel, I've pushed them all away. The enemy uses pride to blind us, Sophia. But God is merciful. The fact that you're here, seeking his face again, shows that his grace is still upon you. But you must understand, the havoc caused in your life didn't come from God. It came from the choices you made when you turned away from him. I tried. I really tried. But how could I focus on God when everything around me was falling apart? My family was broken, Miguel was distant, I just wanted to be loved. I thought if I had more, I'd finally be enough. You weren't meant to fix things on your own, Sophia. That's where you went wrong. You sought validation from people, from success, from relationships, but you never surrendered it all to God. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you, Matthew 6:33. But you went after everything else first. I thought Miguel was the answer. I thought if I could just keep him, everything would be okay. So, I trapped him, with a pregnancy. But now, I see, I disobeyed God at every turn. I was blinded by my own desires. I didn't even care that he wasn't a God-fearing man. I just, I wanted the status. I wanted to prove something. Sin has consequences, Sophia. But so does repentance. You're admitting it now, how you disobeyed, how you let your choices be guided by your own pride and ambition. This is the first step toward healing. But it's important to recognize that God never left you. Even in your darkest moments, he was calling you back. He's a father who longs for his children to come home, Sophia. Look at the prodigal son in Luke 15. He wasted everything, but the moment he came to his senses, his father ran to him. That's God's heart toward you. So, there's hope for me, even after all this. More than hope, Sophia. There's restoration, but you have to stay on this path. It means walking in humility and obedience now. No more pride, no more shortcuts. God's way is the only way. I've lost so much. My family doesn't even want to speak to me. I can't blame them. I caused them so much pain. 
One day, when the time is right, God will open the door for reconciliation. But right now, focus on your relationship with him. Everything else will follow. Surround yourself with believers who can build you up, and seek God in spirit and truth, not just in appearances. This is where the real change begins. I used to be a people pleaser, I cared so much about how I looked, about how people saw me. Now, I just want to be right with God. I want to walk in His will, no matter what it costs. That's the heart of true repentance. It's not about avoiding consequences but aligning your life with God's truth, no matter the cost. You've repented, and God is faithful to forgive. But now, you must stay close to Him. Don't isolate yourself from the body of Christ. And in time, He will heal your relationships. You've been delivered from the spirits of your past, Sophia, but now you must guard your heart. Remember, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Philippians 1, 6. God is not finished with you yet. Sophia stands to leave, feeling lighter. The weight of her mistakes is still there, but now she knows she doesn't have to carry them alone. God has forgiven her, and she's on the path to healing. She walks out of the room with a renewed sense of purpose, determined to build her life on a solid foundation, her relationship with Christ. It's been over a year since Sophia's deliverance, and she's walking steadily on her path of healing. Her heart is open to God's will, and she is now actively involved in the local church community. Pastor Samuel, Rachel, and the church members have been an immense source of support. One day, during a church gathering, an idea comes up that changes everything. Pastor Samuel, addressing the congregation after Sunday service. Brothers and sisters, we've been blessed with a growing community here, but I believe we've also been given the responsibility to bless others. There's a need in this town. Many of us travel hours just to get basic medication. There used to be a pharmacy here, years ago, but it's been abandoned. What if we, as a church, could reopen it and serve the community again? Pastor, I think we might have the perfect person for this. Sophia has a background in healthcare, doesn't she? She's a qualified pharmacist, and she's been wanting to give back to the community. Me, I mean, I'd love to help, but can I really take on something that big? Sophia, God has brought you through a lot. He's positioned you for such a time as this. You have the heart for it. You have the knowledge, and you're not alone in this. We're a community. We'll be with you every step of the way. I am a bit scared. I am not sure I can do this. It's not about perfection, Sophia. It's about willingness. The Bible says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, Colossians 3.23. You've shown that your heart is in the right place. We'll all pitch in. A few days later, Sophia sits with Rachel and Pastor Samuel in the old pharmacy building, which is run down but filled with potential. Sophia, looking around at the dusty shelves, feeling a mix of excitement and nerves. This place, it needs so much work, but I can see it. I can see how it could serve the people here. They won't have to travel so far for medicine anymore. Exactly, and the church will support you. We'll gather volunteers to clean and fix the place up. You'll have what you need to start. And you're not starting from scratch, Sophia. We've already spoken to a few members of the community bank. They're willing to offer you a small loan to stock the pharmacy and hire some staff. I don't know what to say, I never imagined I'd be trusted with something like this. I've made so many mistakes. We've all made mistakes, but this is what healing looks like, allowing God to use your story for His glory. He's not just restoring you for your sake, Sophia. He's restoring you so you can help others. Thank you. I'll do it. I'll open the pharmacy, for the community, and to glorify God. Weeks pass. The entire church comes together to clean, paint, and repair the old building. Sophia, Rachel, and Pastor Samuel work tirelessly alongside volunteers. The pharmacy begins to take shape, and Sophia's joy grows with each passing day. The pharmacy opening. It's a bright morning. The church and community members have gathered for the grand opening of Grace Pharmacy. 
Sophia stands in front of the newly refurbished building, her heart full of gratitude. Pastor Samuel prays over the new pharmacy. Father, we thank you for this place, for this ministry you have birthed through Sophia and this community. We dedicate this pharmacy to your service, that it may be a blessing to all who enter. May healing flow from this place, not just physically, but spiritually. In Jesus' name, Amen. Congregation, Amen. <clears throat> Sophia cuts the ribbon, and there are tears all around. The doors are opened, and the community begins to file in, eager to see the transformation. Sophia greets people warmly, her confidence growing as she takes on her new role. I can't believe we're here. It feels like a dream. It's no dream, Sophia. You worked hard for this, and God's favor is on you. But this is just the beginning. Now, it's time to help others find healing too. Months pass, and the pharmacy has become an essential part of the village. People come not just for medicine, but for advice and counsel. Sophia, now fully grounded in her faith, has taken on an additional role as a mentor to the local youth. One afternoon, a young girl named Maria enters the pharmacy looking troubled. Ms. Sophia, can I talk to you about something? Thank you for watching this episode of The Price of Pride. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our latest content. We'd also appreciate it if you could like and share our videos. We value your support. In the end, Sophia's journey stands as a testament to the power of redemption, resilience, and the profound grace that comes when we surrender our lives to God. Through her struggles, she learned that failure is not the end, but a stepping stone toward growth and transformation. Each role she felt she had failed in, daughter, sister, friend, was not defined by her past mistakes, but rather by her willingness to confront them, seek forgiveness, and start anew. Winter had brought with not just physical coldness, but also a season of introspection. In her darkest moments, when the weight of her choices felt insurmountable, Sophia found shelter, not just in the walls of a motel or a Christian refuge, but in the warmth of community and faith. It was here that she began to recognize the malevolent forces at play in her life, the lies that had led her astray, and the pride that had kept her from true healing. As she embarked on her fasting and prayer journey, guided by Rachel and the compassionate pastor, Sophia's heart softened. Deliverance was not merely a moment. It was the beginning of a transformative relationship with God. In acknowledging her sins, Particularly the consequences of her decisions regarding Miguel and the pain it caused her family, Sophia found clarity. Her journey toward healing was not just about her, it became a beacon of hope for others. The community's support reminded her that she was not alone. Together, they envisioned a pharmacy, a place not only for medicine but for healing, counsel, and community connection. This act of service spoke volumes about the beauty of collective effort and the power of believers coming together to address needs. Sophia learned that true faith is active and engaged, driven by love and the desire to uplift those around us. Today, as the pharmacy thrives, it serves as a physical manifestation of Sophia's transformation and the community's commitment to each other. Her role as a mentor to the youth signifies the importance of sharing wisdom and guiding the next generation to where the life grounded in faith and integrity. May we remember that the path of healing is not a solitary journey. We are called to support one another, to lift each other up, and to share in the beautiful process of restoration. As Sophia learned, it is through surrender and service that we find our true purpose. Let us be empowered by her story. Strive for authenticity in our relationships, and commit ourselves to live out our faith in ways that bless our communities. Each of us has a role to play in God's grand design. Let us step forward in faith and love, transforming not just our lives, but also the lives of those around us. As we reflect on Sophia's journey, 
Let us be inspired to embrace our own struggles and failures as opportunities for growth. Every setback can lead to a comeback if we turn our hearts toward God, surround ourselves with genuine believers, and seek to make a difference in the lives of others. Before we conclude this episode, we would like to share the following verses for you to reflect upon. Please note that they are taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Redemption and Forgiveness 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Psalm 103, 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Isaiah 1.18 says, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Resilience and Strength in Trials James 1, 2-4 says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. 2 Corinthians 4 16-18 says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Community and Support Hebrews 10.24-25 says, And let us consider one another to provoke into love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. Galatians 6, 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Romans 12, 10 says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, and honor preferring one another. Healing and Wholeness Jeremiah 30, 17 says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Psalm 147, 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. Matthew 11:28 to 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Service and Purpose 1 Peter 4.10 says, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Mark 10.45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. And Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts open to your love and grace. We thank you for the gift of redemption and for the promise that, if we confess our sins, our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9 Lord, we acknowledge our shortcomings and the burdens we carry. We ask for your healing touch upon our lives, renewing us from the inside out just as you have promised in Jeremiah 30, 17. As we seek to grow in faith and resilience, help us to count our trials as joy, knowing that the testing of our faith produces patience and maturity. James 1, 2-4 May we lean on your strength, for we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4, 13 In our moments of weakness, remind us that you are our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Psalm 46, 1 Lord, we pray for the community of believers around us. Teach us to bear one another's burdens and encourage one another in love and good works. Galatians 6, 2 Hebrews 10, 24-25 
Let us support each other as we walk this journey of faith together, lifting each other up in prayer and action. We ask for your wisdom and guidance as we seek to serve others in our communities. Help us to recognize the gifts you have given us and to use them to bless those around us. 1 Peter 4.10 May our actions reflect the love of Christ, who came not to be served but to serve. Mark 10.45 as we embark on this journey of healing and restoration, remind us of your promise that you will restore our health and heal our wounds. Jeremiah 30, 17 May we find rest in you, Lord, and may your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7 We thank you for your unwavering love and faithfulness. We commit our lives and our plans into your hands trusting that you are working all things together for our good and your glory. Romans 8.28 Empower us to walk in faith, serve with joy, and live in a way that honors you. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.